What's up, guys? So, I'm going to talk a bit about today's race uh, at Kansas. Um, before I talk about the race, we're going to talk about the, the end of the race and what you're watching here in the background. Someone finally tried to step up to Ross Chastain, which is something I said needs to happen in the garage, so, you know. But apparently, uh, this guy was the wrong guy to do it. Because as, as you could see here, um, he he puts his hands on Ross Chastain. He grabs him by the, 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 the fire suit. And then Ross cold cocks him, right? And right away, these idiots over here, this guy and then this guy, they step in to break it up, right? So I'm I'm going to tell you what I think. Hold on a second. On here, I guess. <laughs> That's Noah Gregson and Ross Chastain going at it. Chastain connected. I don't know if Noah got him first, but... Look at wow. that stupid bowl cut. Everybody's overheated, including several of the tempers yeah, here in Kansas. Like you would, guy, but he was like touching guy, me, it look, felt like, and it right away. just had me kind of out of control. <laughs> so uh, I'm sorry, man. Uh... When two grown men have a dispute, you have to let them settle things. I'm not saying let them fight for like a, you know, five minutes, but you got to let the guy get a, a, a chance to respond. Um, that's really, I, I mean, it, it, it's Noah Gregson's fault for, for like, watch, he, he was grabbing him right here. But once you put your hands on a grown man, you have to expect a reaction. You got to be ready to fight. You can't just do that. And it looks to me like he was thinking that Chastain wasn't going to do anything. So he thought, I guess, that he was going to intimidate him. And he's clearly trying to use the moment to show everyone what a badass he is. It didn't work out for him because Chastain ends up, watch. Like he would, but he was like oh. touching me, it felt like. And... So, you know, he should have been ready. When you approach someone in this in a situation like this, you have to be ready. So that's on uh, Noah Gregson, right? But in his defense, I will say, you can't just step in immediately. When this guy punches him, you got to give the guy a chance to, to fight back. I don't think this is fair. They already it just had broke me kind of out of control. So, um, yeah, I wish we could. Uh... And look, look, Chastain puts his hands up like, oh, I, I got my shot in. I'm good. You keep you keep him back. Um, the winner here is clearly Ross Chastain. Um, this dumbass bowl cut guy, you know, I don't know why he has a reputation as like a tough guy. I've never seen it. I think people get carried away with image and that's what happens, right? He wasn't ready and he ended up getting punched in the face, much like uh, Ambrose punched Casey Mears. So in this case, uh, Casey Mears is bowl cut boy over here and Ross Chastain ends up being Ambrose. Uh, I mean, he landed a cool, uh, a clean firm shot right i know there's people already saying oh he didn't really phase this guy you know he was fine you could say what you want he ended up landing a clean shot and this guy ended up you know not having a chance to respond it's over you had your moment and you fucked up uh <laughs> Everybody thinks it's funny now um, because now you just made the villain. Uh, he comes out on top again. Look at his face. On here, Why? I guess. <laughs> That's Noah Gregson and Ross Chastain <laughs> going at it. Chastain connected. I don't know if Noah got him first. No, it, it's not here. There was a point. Oh, there it is. Look at Chastain's evil grin. That guy, I'm telling you, 
he has a show uh, uh, an angel on his shoulder because no matter what happens during a race after a race he always comes out on top nothing bad happens to him he can wreck people he can get away with all kinds of shit people complain everybody you know they're you know not everybody but uh he's got a lot of detractors and everything and I am no fan of Ross Chastain. I don't like either one of these assholes anyway. So I have no dog in the fight here. But it would have been nice had they allowed this to go a little further. Um, and now you bowl cut boy over here ends up looking. He's the loser here. I don't care what people say about, oh, the punch didn't really do anything. That was a good, clean shot. And that's what happens when you approach people and you put your hands on them and you're not ready. You never know how they're going to react. And I, and you can tell he wasn't ready. Now he looks like a fool. And this is going to be around forever on social media. So it's not bad enough that you got a stupid bowl cut. Uh, <laughs> this guy's a... Cl I, I never liked him anyway. But I'm no fan of either one of these guys. And look at this evil grin. Um, this is perfect. This whole thing, it just shows you the, the whole paints a perfect picture of how Ross Chastain clearly has an angel on his shoulder. Even during the race, anything that happens on the track, he can end up going to the back, messing up in the pits. Something happens. He ends up always with a, with a good finish. It's like he has an angel on his shoulder. So... Yeah, and like I said, these two asshats over here uh, getting in immediately, breaking things up. You got to let grown men settle things at least to a point where somebody's just getting the better of the other guy. Then you step in, right? Just like growing up as a kid when you have a fight, sometimes you got to let kids fight to a point so that they can get their point across and settle things, right? This is going to always be unsettled for Bowl Cut Boy because these guys stepped in, did not give him a chance to respond. But like I said, this is his fault for not being ready. Uh, the moment he decided to confront uh, uh, Chastain, he should have been the one to throw a punch. That's what happens when you play tough guy and you're not really a tough guy. He's a phony tough guy. And Chastain gets the benefit now of looking like a guy that can handle himself. And I can't be mad at the guy. You know, somebody finally stepped up to him and he punched him. So it, it made for great TV, except, of course, Fox, uh, as usual. Um, I don't know what the fuck they're doing. The end of these races, these post-race coverages are horrible they're too short there's they're they're in such a rush to cut away to whatever schedule programming they have it's just bad um whatever happened to victory lane interviews the celebration nothing you get a couple of quick words um from somebody up front and that's it it's over everybody goes home then they cut away to whatever fucking programming they have. Fox continues to stink up the show. The best part of the broadcast was Kurt Busch. He's great in the booth. Um, if these guys are smart, they'll do whatever they can to, to uh, get him in the booth. Get rid of Boyer. Replace him with, with Kurt Busch. Um, I don't know. It, it's the, They still don't do enough for me throughout the race they need to do a couple of through the field segments throughout a race so that everybody can get to know what's going on with each individual car um so yeah but the race itself nine out of ten and the only reason i didn't even give it a higher rating is because let's be honest there were too many cautions for my taste. Um, it just, I don't like 
every all these breaks in the race, right? Every time there's a caution, it kind of just breaks everything up again. You got to sit, you got to wait through the caution, go back to commercial. You got to get a re then the restarts. These guys don't give an inch anymore. There's no give and take. It's a free for all. I know a lot of people find it entertaining and exciting, but I could, I think the best parts of the race is when it gets into a long run. And thank God that the, the race did not end with a, a green white checkers like restart because you got to see a perfect finish two guys battling um and you know hamlin say what you want he he just stayed on him stayed on him and waited to the last possible second to make a move i do think it was a racing deal i am no fan of denny hamlin's so I'm sure that if you're a fan of Kyle Larson, you're probably upset. They did make contact, but Larson was really on edge, super loose, right up near the wall. And, you know, Hamlin had to go for it. Um, it was a racing deal, right? But it was a great finish to a great race. This might be the best race of the year, okay? And... You know, say what you want about this car. It is far from perfect. It needs work. But the, the mile and a half package is really good. It's not going to be perfect. People are always going to complain. They're always going to find. But, man, you had tire wear. You had long. The long green flag runs tell the story. You saw people coming, going. Um, the racing was fantastic. Plenty of passing everywhere throughout the field, and it wasn't meaningless bullshit uh, stat padding, you know, like with Daytona, Talladega, and Atlanta, where they tell you, oh, they had 250 passes during the race. But meanwhile, it's just two conga lines doing this all day. And every time they, they do this, they count all those cars doing this to each other, they count that as, as a pass. So on one lap, you can literally have 80 passes. Like, this is ridiculous. Like, um, so this is real, right? Uh, all the passes in this race. Um, so fantastic race. Very entertaining. We got to see green flag pit stops. Um, but like I said, there were, a, a, there were too many cautions, right, for my taste. If we didn't have that many cautions, the race would have easily been nine and a half out of ten. Um, but nine out of ten is fantastic, and I it is definitely right there for best race we've had this year. Kansas is a great track. I love mile and a half tracks, and you just saw this car put on another great show at a mile and a half. Um, like I said, they still need to work on the car. And adding some horsepower would definitely benefit, but especially at the shorter tracks. Uh, but what a race. Great entertainment. And then to end with this at the end. <laughs> like, like they would, but he this. was like touching me, it felt like, and it just had me kind of out of control. Oh, so, can hear um, Larson. This is Larson. Yeah, I wish we could. Uh, <laughs> wish we could see what was uh, <laughs> going on. Is that interview interrupted? Going on here, I guess. <laughs> That's Noah Gregson and Ross Chastain <laughs> going at it. So, um, great race. Great race. You can't ask for more than this. Uh, you can. <laughs> like, I am asking for less cautions, right? But the cautions really are were caused because these guys don't give an inch anymore. And they mentioned that throughout the race like a thousand times. They just don't give an inch. I think... The give and take era is dead. I mean, we just have to accept it. It's over. Um, these guys all grew up on iRacing or, or video games and just, it's a different mindset. Every fucking restart is four wide. Um, so it is exciting, but it also creates a lot of issues. Um, 
but I'm, I still thought it was a fantastic race. And if we get more of these, and Dover was great. So we got, we're, we're about to see a really, really good part of the schedule. I, I mentioned this weeks ago. I think the next eight races are going to be great races. Uh, this is really good. But the coverage still sucks ass. They cut away too quick. Um, they miss a lot of the on-track action. Like, the production is still terrible. Uh, Kurt Busch was a shining light in, in the whole broadcast. But even he's not enough, really, to elevate. The, the problems with the broadcast are just, they're too far gone, right? So, but I still had a great time watching it. Great race. And, yeah, like I said, man, this was great. Um, someone finally steps up to Ross Chastain, but it was the wrong guy to do it. What if Racing did post some a tweet about that? And I agree 100%. He's the wrong guy to do it. But I think the lesson here is for the next guy that, that approaches Ross Chastain, because he's going to fucking piss more people off. He can't help himself. But the next time a guy does it, you better be ready to handle yourself. You can't just put your, your hands on a grown man and, and not react. Like, expect them to take it. You know, if you put your hands on me, and I'm not I'm not a tough guy, but if you put your hands on me, it's on. I'm, I'm You know, to me, that's a threat. You're not going to put your hands on me, and I'm just going to stand there and let you do it. So Ross Chastain's reaction was 100% you know, acceptable. So he gets credit for that. Kudos to him. But it really is messed up that those guys stepped in way too quick, did not give things a chance to settle, right? You got to let two grown men handle their business. And once the fight starts really rolling, then you get in and break it up. But you got to give these guys a chance. Is It wasn't a fair fight to me because they stepped in too quick. You can't just let one guy get that, that one shot in and then break him up. Um, that's just not good. And I say that as somebody who does not like either one of these guys. They could beat the shit out of each other till eternity uh, comes uh, for all I care. But the loser here is clearly Noah Gregson. And when you when you come out with a bowl cut, um, I don't understand what, what people see in him that makes them say he's a tough guy. Um, these guys, he's a poser. Uh, he, when he put his hands on Chastain, he should have been ready to fight. You can't do that. Uh, and, and just get punched in the face. And now, you know, this is going to live on forever on social media. So he's got to sleep with that. Uh, anyway, those are my thoughts. I look forward to your comments later.